All right, welcome students. Welcome to uh, the Cal Poly Summer Webinar Series. This is going to be our first webinar that we are just about to get started. I have not gotten started yet. I'm gonna let a couple minutes go by before we get started uh, with our first webinar, Spotlighting Student Life here at Cal Poly. I wanna welcome each of you to our time here together. We're gonna get started in just a minute. I wanna welcome each of you to uh, the next hour on uh, where we have a chance for students and staff here at Cal Poly to share uh, what student life is like here at Cal Poly. We're going to get started when more of you join us here today. Looks like we got a bunch of students um, joining us here today and we are so excited uh, to share more about the Cal Poly experience and experiences to get involved outside the classroom and really complement that Cal Poly learning. So we're gonna get started in just a minute or two. Um, I wanna welcome you all to Cal Poly's summer series, summer webinar series. Looks like we still might have some students joining us here today. So we have uh, an hour in store for you. We're gonna, we're gonna hear from several different campus partners and uh, we're gonna present some really uh, exciting opportunities for you all to get involved in student life here at Cal Poly. Um, as uh, we get started, I wanna kind of introduce myself. Uh, my name is Aaron Borgeson. I am an, admin an admissions officer here at Cal Poly in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment. I'm a two-time graduate of Cal Poly originally from Temecula, California. Uh, it's about an hour north of San Diego. Came here to pursue my undergraduate in political science. I use the pronouns he, his, and him. And I'm gonna guide you and kind of um, guide you through what we have in store today. I wanna welcome each of you fall incoming students to our session here today. And I am so excited for what's in store. Uh, there are two things, there are a couple housekeeping items that I want you all to uh, recognize. Uh, one is that there's gonna be a Q and A bunk, uh, button down below. Uh, we have staff and students from across campus in different ways that you all can get involved. And so if you have questions throughout our presentation, for our staff and students, use that Q&A function. Um, some of you, have, that if you've joined a Zoom webinar in the past, it's gonna be quite familiar to you all. Uh, one thing that I ask that you keep in mind is that if you ask us a question and want that question to be kept private, please indicate that so our, our panelists can know to privately send that back to you. If not, those questions will be available to all incoming, all students on the call here today. We also have the opportunity, we are recording this information um, um, uh, session here today for you all. So if after the fact, if you do want to go back and watch this, this will be posted on the Cal Poly Admissions YouTube channel. Before we get started, I do want to acknowledge uh, where we are here today and where Cal Poly sits. As we welcome you into the Cal Poly community, I want you all to recognize that our central, our cent our central coast location of California, uh, we are not the first peoples of San Luis Obispo. In fact, Cal Poly is located, located in, in Tilhini, the place of the full moon. We gratefully acknowledge, respect, and thank the Yachtahini, Yachtahini, Yacht Tuchu, Yaktahini, Northern Chumash tribe of San Luis Obispo County and region, where we are quite frankly guests here um, on the central coast of California. And um, if you are placed in the Yaktahini residential community as incoming first years, you'll learn more about, uh, well, all incoming students will learn more about what this means to be on Northern Chumash lands. So let's get started and actually hear from um, our students here today. We actually have a couple poll questions that we just launched. We are wondering uh, what type of student are you? That could be an incoming first year student or incoming freshman. We also are wondering if there's any transfer students on the call here today. There also could be parents and supporters. And then guess what? As since each of you declared your major on the application, and uh, we have 63 different incoming, 63 different majors at Cal Poly, all of you are going to be within one of our six different colleges. So I ask that you indicate what college you're from. Um, and again, we have six different colleges at Cal Poly. Thank you so much for students for already responding. It's great to see uh, your responses. And then where are you from? So you could be from throughout California. We might even have some international students on the call. And we welcome all students here today, no matter if you're from California, throughout the United States or international. 
we'll let this go just for a couple more seconds here. And then um, in a short time, I will be sure to uh, uh, share the responses and so that you all can see who is joining us here today for our webinar. All right, looks like we have a pretty good response rate from all of you. Let's uh, share out these responses uh, for, uh, for who's coming uh, here today. It looks, hey, I am so excited. 28% of you all are coming from the College of Liberal Arts. That's my alma mater. I'm super excited my, as my degree was in political science. It's great to see you all. Uh, it looks like most of you are incoming first years and transfer students and as well as parents and supporters. So this is great. We're super excited for you all to uh, join us here today. And it looks like we have some pretty good uh, swath of folks coming from throughout California as well as across the country. Let's um, let's kind of shift gears here and we're going to get started with introducing kind of the agenda here. Uh, you're going to be hearing from Associated Students Incorporated, clubs and organizations, as well as fraternity and sorority life. In that order, we're going to get started here in just a short minute with our Associated Students Incorporated. These three different departments on campus and groups are here to represent um, kind of what they, the, the ways for how they connect with students and support life outside of the Cal Poly academic experience. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, shift gears, stop talking here, and introduce my colleagues and friends in Associated Students Incorporated. Let's hear from them all and uh, take it away. Yes, so hi everyone. I hope you are all doing well and enjoying this presentation. Um, my name is Shana Lynch. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm a fourth year political science major. This year, I will be serving as the 2020-2021 Associated Students Incorporated Student Body President. If we can advance to the next slide, please. Perfect. So today, I'll be sharing an overview about ASI student government and what we do on campus. As you can see in this slide, ASI's tagline is experience life outside of the classroom. And student government is just one program offered within ASI. So as I said earlier, my name is Shana Lynch, and back in April during our annual campus-wide elections, I was elected to serve as the ASI president for this academic year. My platform concentrates on four key issue areas, diversity, equity, and inclusion, health and well-being, sustainability, and empowering the student voice. We must look at all areas of campus, whether already identified as an issue area or not, through these four lenses in order to really build up a better Cal Poly. It is through looking at how these points intersect with one another on our campus that we can begin to see the best methodology of addressing inequities. Each of these areas of my platform are incredibly important to me because they are important to students and impact the student experience tremendously. Next slide. Now you might be asking yourself, what is ASI? Associated Students Incorporated, known as ASI, is an inclusive, empowering, student-driven organization committed to providing programs, services, and facilities that enhance and develop the student learning experience. ASI is a student-run nonprofit organization that provides opportunities for students to experience life outside of the classroom. Things like leadership, employment, recreation, shared governance, and social and cultural experiences are all things ASI provides to students. All of ASI's offerings are free or low cost and are funded through student fees. All the things we offer are our way of giving back to students. Currently, many of our programs and services are being offered virtually. Next slide. And as you can see from this chart, there are many different areas hosted under ASI, such as Rose Flow, the Children's Center, and Programming. I will very quickly run through some of these programs in ASI, but today I will mainly focus on the one bubble on the right, which is ASI Student Government. Next slide. So ASI has a variety of programs that are all meant to help students have the ultimate college experience. These pictures show just some of these programs, including rec center classes, our rock climbing wall, poly escape camping trips, intramural sports, craft center classes, and concerts. Next slide. Additionally, ASI manages some facilities on campus, and it is within these facilities that ASI programming offers. ASI serves as the leaseholder for five campus facilities, managing their day-to-day -day operations. We have the Julian A. McPhee University Union, which serves as the main hub on campus, 
has lots of food and dining options, and is a prime social spot for students. The Cal Poly Rec Center is the prized gem of Cal Poly's campus building and has over a million entries per academic year. The Dora Family Field hosts games and now includes a pro shop rental center. The Cal Poly Sports Complex hosts ASI intramural sports games. And lastly, we have the beloved Orfleo Family and ASI Children's Center. You can take a virtual tour of these facilities now on the ASI website. And in regards to these facilities being open this year, I will be honest in that we do not fully know what the year will look like, especially with facilities. We will make sure to keep students updated as we learn about how these facilities can be utilized. Moving into recreational sports, students have access to numerous activities and programs that allow them to go above and beyond their recreational ambitions. These programs are operated from the Cal Poly Rec Center, the premier destination for fitness, recreation, relaxation, and wellness on campus. This cutting edge facility offers multiple exercise rooms, state-of-the-art equipment, an indoor track, six gymnasium courts, six racquetball courts, a wide variety of group fitness classes, equipment checkout at the pro shop, personal training, an Olympic-sized lap pool, leisure pool, beach volleyball courts, recreation areas, relaxation zones, and the ASI Poly Escapes Climbing Park. So it really, it has it all. Um, even if you're not participating in ASI programs or working on your fitness, the facility is a great spot to relax with friends, recharge, hang out, study, or take a nap. In regards to ASI intramural sports, they offer various leagues and tournaments, including basketball, flag football, soccer, volleyball, and tennis leagues. There are also one day tournaments that are less of a time commitment and are tons of fun. Some examples of our past tournaments are aqua basketball, spike ball, table tennis, dodgeball, capture the flag, and more. In light of online programming, intramurals are offering online tournaments and competitions on our Instagram currently. We also have fitness and personal training. There are classes offered in various discipline areas of mind and body at the rec center on an annual basis that are free, including yoga, cycling, hit, six pack abs, strength training, and more. Some fee-based workshops that offer, are offered to students include TRX and kickboxing. You can also book a certified personal trainer for either a one-on-one -on -one session or group sessions and your first personal training session is free. You can check out the ASI website at asi.calpoly.edu for a full class schedule and to see our current virtual class offerings. Next slide. Now on to student government. So the student government on our campus has a large range of influence in addressing different campus, county, and state issues. We are broken up into three different branches. ASI student government is comprised of elected and volunteer student leaders designated into these three branches that act as a representative body for the student community at Cal Poly. As the collective voice of students, leaders advocate for change, support, and resources to create positive contributions both on and off campus. First, we have the executive cabinet. This branch is led by the ASI president myself and their chief of staff. The ASI president is elected during the annual spring quarter in a campus-wide election. The president and their chief of staff then appoint a cabinet of five to nine students to work on various campus issues, anywhere from parking and transportation to diversity, equity, and inclusion. A great example of something that the executive cabinet has done in the past was run a successful voter registration campaign where we registered more students than any other private or public university in California. Next, we have the ASI Board of Directors. This is a group of 25 elected individuals from, six of the, from each of the six academic colleges. Each director runs a campaign in spring with their platform of what they believe will lead to a better Cal Poly. This group is led by a chair elected by the previous year's board. They hear presentations from administrators and work to ensure student concerns are at the forefront of decisions made on campus. Last year, the board passed resolutions on different issues ranging from campus food to rights for undocumented students. Lastly, we have the University Union Advisory Board. This is a group of appointed students, one from each academic college, that help advise the use of our ASI-managed facilities. 
These include the Rec Center, University Union, Sports Complex, and Dora Family Field. All positions for student government open during spring quarter, so keep your eyes out for them. We also have an executive staff, which is the area of student government you can get involved with at any stage of your academic career. The executive staff is designed for students who want to learn about student government, be better prepared for taking on a role, and to develop their leadership skills. Information regarding executive staff is shared with incoming students during orientation. The best way to see what we're up to is to follow student government and ASI on social media. Next slide. Now I wanna take a minute to speak specifically to one of our annual campaigns, which I briefly mentioned when I spoke about the executive cabinet. This is our lecture right voter registration campaign. During the last California ballot poll competition, we came in first, meaning that we registered the most students to vote out of any public or private university. The picture on the left is from this, when the Secretary of State, Alex Padilla, came and presented us with the ballot poll trophy for this. Cal Poly students make up 40% of the city of SLO, so it's important for students to take an interest in being civically engaged. ASI is here to help guide you through the process of being active in local, state, and federal politics. This isn't necessarily confined to voting, as that isn't an option for many students. Being civically engaged can also mean signing petitions, writing letters to representatives, or speaking at open forums, and we're here to help you through those processes. Next slide. Now, here is how students can become more involved in ASI student government. Please feel free to take a photo of the screen if you want to revisit the directions later on. So you go to asi.calpoly.edu, click the Get Involved tab on the top, click Student Government, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see a screen that says Get Involved Today. And once you fill out your information and submit that, you'll be added to our student government newsletter and will receive updates from us. Next slide. And then you can also feel free to add the ASI president Snapchat if you want a really easy way to connect with me personally, or feel free to email me at asipresident at calpoly.edu. Next slide. And then thank you all so much for attending this presentation. I encourage you all to check out asi.calpoly.edu um, to explore everything that ASI has to offer. Thank you. Thank you so much for that thorough presentation on Associate Students Incorporated or ASI. I am so excited for you all now to hear from our group um, over clubs and organizations here at Cal Poly and what a great resource they all are. So welcome to um, our presentation, uh, the team from uh, Clubs and Orgs and uh, take it away. Thanks, Aaron. Man, it is so great to be with you all here today. I've really been looking forward to this. Uh, I'm Chip Newinchwander, and I work with clubs and organizations. And here joining to me, joining me today is Sarah Hawkins. Sarah, can you say hi? Hi, everyone. We're so delighted to visit with you. And we even have a couple of students who have agreed to come on who are totally involved at Cal Poly. And um, I just got to say, to mention back to ASI, we have an awesome ASI group. Um, they have been putting on some really cool events. Their ability to pivot over this last quarter. They had uh, David Dobrik. Does anybody know who that is? He's a, like a, I guess a pretty famous vlogger. And he like, you could have a chance as a Cal Poly student to be in the virtual room with David. And then like Shaquille O'Neal, I guess was the DJ. And it, it's just really awesome. But enough of that. Let's talk about uh, clubs and organizations. So for clubs and orgs, this is a huge part of Cal Poly. There's, I, I got to warn you about Cal Poly. There's just something in our genetic makeup. Um, we were, I mean, the students, if somebody asked me what's so great about Cal Poly, and I love this school, I mean, definitely the professors are awesome, no doubt about it, but the students are so switched on. That's just the community that you've decided to join. They come in and they are ready to go. They... They want to know how did they get plugged in. They're very interested. They have lots of questions. And it's almost like they have, they come in with this posture, you know, kind of like if ever anybody like plays volleyball or any sports, they're, they're kind of like set and ready, like for that volleyball to come over that net. And they're just ready. And Cal Poly creates this wonderful system to welcome you in. They have a club showcase where we have representatives from all sorts of different kinds of ways that you can get involved that are really legitimately looking forward to talking to you. 
they want for you to come and express an interest in them. And uh, we're going to share with you some ways that you can get involved in Cal at Cal Poly. And you might want to follow what you're interested in. So if you could switch to that next slide. I know, but this is not good timing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, okay, so recreation. Um, think about what is it that you love to plug into? What is it that is something that either you've enjoyed doing in the past or something that you want to try doing in the future? If you go to clubs.calpoly.edu, you can find a whole slew of different kinds of activities you can get involved in that has to do with your passion or your interest. Now you might say, well, what does it look like in a virtual world? Well, we're all still kind of figuring that out, but I will tell you this thing, that the students who are involved in these clubs, whether it's recreation or whatever, are being very creative about ways to help you engage. They want for you to be a part of the community that they have helped to put together. And they're gonna find really creative ways for you to do that. Um, so there's just as many different ways as you can think of to get involved. Uh, we have pursuits for that. This last year, uh, just for instance, a ukulele club started up. Want to play a ukulele? We got a ukulele club. There was also another club that has to do with Rubik's Cubes. You know, they call it Speed Cubing Club. Curious about how to do that? Want to do it with other people? They're getting together and doing it. So recreation, we've got you covered. Next slide. And then academic. Okay, so academic is awesome because you have ways of connecting with what it is that you want to pursue during your time at Cal Poly outside of the classroom. So one of the great things about academic pursuits is you can get involved in a club. If you're pursuing something, chances are there's also a club or uh, some sort of endeavor that's available outside the classroom. And what's really great about that is you can uh, learn about opportunities in there and then you'll have students who have kind of gone there before you and it, it's very well known that a lot of them are very interested in kind of taking you under their wing and kind of showing you what they learned along the way. So it's a way that you can learn faster about your chosen pursuit. Let's say you, like at Cal Poly, you have to choose a major. You've chosen a major, but you're not quite certain if this is exactly the right fit for you. This is a great way to double down on that and find out quicker if this is the right pursuit. And if it is, great. You're among like-minded people who can kind of give you the ins and outs, tell you about different classes, professors, all that kind of good stuff. And they have a lot of great activities that that filter into the kind of thing that you love to do. What's that next slide have in store for us? Professional, oh man, I love it. So this is Shep, this is a um, group. They, um, I'm not sure where exactly this is. I wanna say it's in Texas, but I'm not sure. They, they are just one of many professional organizations, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. We have a whole group of different um, clubs that you can get involved in that have to do with your what you want to do when you get out of college. Cal Poly is great about positioning your mindset in terms of thinking, hey, what do you want to be doing in five years, 10 years, 20 years? Um, and then right after you get out of college. And what they'll often do is they'll have guests come. And one of the great things about this virtual environment is now they're thinking about uh, guests coming from uh, not just who are within like driving distance of the Central Coast. They, they, they'll have people who are often recruiters, or experts in a certain field that will come in via Zoom or whatever, and they're there to answer your questions, and they wanna meet you. They wanna see uh, what kind of Cal Poly students are interested in what they have to offer, because quite frankly, they love Cal Poly students. They just, um, you know, there's, in some cases, there's a long line of interest list for people who are interested in Cal Poly students. And I think the next slide is, Cal, is about club sports. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hello everyone. As Chip introduced me earlier, I'm Sarah Hawkins, she, her, hers, and I'm the coordinator for club sports. And I also serve as the advisor, um, I'm sorry, I'm the coordinator for all clubs, but I serve as the advisor for club sports. We have 29 competitive teams that compete in leagues um, locally, regionally, and all across the country. Um, in the 2018-2019 year, we had 17 of those teams qualify for national level competition and two of them went to went on go went on to win their national championship so we're really proud of our club sports program we have 1300 athletes participating 
between the 29 sports. And so there's something for everyone. If you're looking to continue a sport that you've loved over the years, but you're not looking to do it at the full um, NCAA level, or maybe you're looking to participate in a new sport or a sport that doesn't exist at the NCAA level, club sports is a great option for you. And I highly recommend that you check, check out our list of teams, or if you have specific questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and I'll be glad to get back to you um, after I speak. Um, but yeah, club sports, everything from sailing to triathlon to soccer to rugby, we've got it. Um, next slide, please. In addition to our club sports, we also have physical clubs that are involved in different other things like dance and um, physical activity, and especially our performance teams. We've got a lot of people that just want to move their body or they want to share their art with other students or other people in the community. And so there's a big variety of dance teams. We have um, hiking clubs. We have so many different options for you to be able to share your gift and your art with other people both on campus and in our local community. Um, next slide, please. And then for service, there are so many great opportunities for you to get involved in helping out both on campus and in our community. We have pictured here, we've got our Surfrider Foundation. And so they do beach cleanups. They also do advocacy events where they bring guest speakers or virtual events to campus to help people learn about how trash is affecting our ocean and how single use plastics can affect our um, eco cycle. And, and in addition to Surfrider, we have tons of other organizations. We have um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is supported by different fundraising events on campus. We have the Relay for Life. We have a dance-a-thon. We have all kinds of ways that you can get involved to really do a good thing for yourself. One of my favorite proverbs is if whoever saves a life saves the world. And so you have an opportunity to get involved and, and really help change the world and save the world. I'm going to turn it back over to Chip now for our last slide for Clubs and Orgs. Awesome. Yeah, community uh, is so huge. You need some people around you. When you get started at Cal Poly, it's just too big for you to expect all of Cal Poly to be your community. You need to find a place to plug in where people care about you. They miss you when you're not there. Um, there's, even if, it, even if there's an element that's virtual, you can't always be together. I mean, even if we were together in person right now, there would still be a virtual element, right? They did studies and they found that when your phone vibrates and it's somebody reaching out to you to say, hey, what's up? our brains light up like a Christmas tree. And um, it's just, we, it, it's like affection. It feels like a hug, kind of. And regardless of what this next quarter looks like, we want for you to feel that sense of connection and for you to give that sense of connection. So uh, in a moment, we'll hear from uh, uh, our fraternity and sorority life group, which is a great resource, but we also have lots of other groups that uh, allow you to form your sense of community. We have tons of faith-based, organizations. We have other organizations that have to do with something that you're interested in, but they're very good at dialing into what you, um, how you identify. Um, we have affinity-based groups, tons of affinity-based groups. So find your community and, and lean in. Don't be holding back. Don't be sitting on the sidelines. Uh, I encourage you to speak up, to find ways to connect with these groups. Um, and before I switch off, I wanted to introduce to you a couple of students. I don't know if Sanj and uh, Tess, can you unmute and turn off your turn on your microphone for a second? I don't know if you can pop up for just a second to say hi, but we invited them to join us for the Q and A session. Are either of you around? Hi, I'm right here. <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, Tess, go ahead and introduce yourself. A couple of the things that you're involved in, and what do you love about Cal Poly? Oh, great question. So, hi, all. My name is Tess Laurie. I am an incoming third year liberal arts and engineering studies major. Um, at Cal Poly, I've been super involved with Society of Women Engineers. My first year, I was lightly involved in Engineers Without Borders and Critical Global Engagement Club. And things I love about Cal Poly, everything is so student driven, like students really take the reins on so many of the aspects of what we do at the school. And I just think that's a really unique thing. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. And I think we actually have the president of SWE, Society of Women Engineers here. Um, are you around? And if not, yeah, hi. Okay, great. Hi everyone, my name is Sanj. Um, as Chip mentioned, I'm the president of um, Cal Poly Society of Women Engineers. Um, I've been involved since my first year in various different roles and it's really just an amazing community of women. Um, and I've 
learned a lot and have grown a lot both professionally, learned technical skills, and also as a leader. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them. Awesome. Thanks for chiming in, and we look forward to that Q&A session at the end. Um, one question we did have pop up in the Q&A is about certain kinds of clubs. Do you have certain kinds of clubs? We do. Uh, just check out our clubs.calpoly.edu page for a listing of all of our current clubs that we have. So you can peruse and see if there's a good fit for you. And with that, I'm going to hand it off. Thank you so much, Chip and Sarah, for this uh, excellent pr presentation on clubs and organizations. I have to echo what Tess just said, and that is, um, uh, and, and as 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 she included that, you know, she got involved freshman year with uh, two different engineering clubs. I would recommend you all to jump right in uh, during your first year of study, if either that's your first year as a freshman or a transfer student, get involved. Um, that's just one excellent way to make sure that you can call Cal Poly home um, from that very first uh, kind of chapter here at Cal Poly. Such a great recommendation. Um, I was so timid when I got to Cal Poly about seeking different opportunities. And I just, I want you all to learn from my mistake and get involved and, and take that risk. Um, uh, lower that cool card and get involved. So let's hear from Fraternity and Sorority Life um, as our third campus partner, uh, last but not least. Um, and let's hear from student uh, Fraternity and Sorority Life to hear more about other opportunities to get involved at Cal Poly. Thank you uh, for joining us as we present on Fraternity and Sorority Life at Cal Poly. We have two professional staff members with us today and three students from the three different councils here at Cal Poly. Um, my name is Kanani Maki Cal. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a, I'm a coordinator for Fraternity and Sorority Life, and I am the primary advisor for our the United Sorority and Fraternity Council, which houses our culturally based organizations. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Ayala Capola. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am also a coordinator for Fraternity and Sorority Life, and I am the primary advisor for our Panhellenic Council, which houses our large social women's organizations. Hi everyone, my name is Aiden Levo. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm a fourth year city and regional planning major. I serve as the VP of risk management for IFC, also known as the Interfraternity Council. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I currently serve as the vice president of communications on the Panhellenic Executive Board, um, and I'm a second year journalism major. Hi everyone, my name is Kenji Kurose. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a fourth year math major and I serve as the Vice President of External Affairs for USFC. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, so just a brief overview of what we will be talking about today. We are going to meet more of our professional staff. We're gonna talk about our mission, vision, and pillars, our community at a glance, go over some of the programming that we do as an office. Um, and then our students will talk about each of the three councils that we have. Um, and then we'll talk about some recruitment tips for the fall. Um, and, then, and then we'll have a question and answer session with everyone else. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide again. So um, these are our three professional staff. You've met Kanani and I. We also have Shauna, who's our lead coordinator. Um, all of our information, this is directly pulled from our website. So if you ever have any questions, um, all of our information is right here. So please feel free to um, ask us any questions. Next slide. Uh, now that you know who our office is, let's talk about what we do. I'm gonna talk about our mission and then briefly touch on the six pillars of fraternity and sorority life. So next slide, please. Um, okay, when we think about mission statements, we should answer questions such as what do we do? Whom do we do it for? And what value are we bringing? Let me answer that for you in our miss mission statement. The mission of the fraternity and sorority life office is to foster the learning and development of students who affiliate with 35 social fraternities and sororities at California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo. The community, the fraternity and sorority life office will provide opportunities and support for our community to be a relevant and contributing part of fulfilling the mission of FSL and Cal Poly. 
Next slide, please. All right, we wanna make sure all of our chapters prioritize these pillars in everything that they do. So scholarship, we understand that our students are students first, and we make sure to prioritize their academics and provide resources for them so they can con continue to be successful. Leadership and value. Uh, being part of a fraternity or sorority gives our students leadership opportunities where they can grow personally, academically, professionally, and socially. Um, community service and philanthropy. All of our organizations pr prioritize helping others both locally and nationally. Safety and risk management. With fun comes responsibility. We want to make sure that our students understand how to have fun safely and look out for each other. Brotherhood and sisterhood. People are making lifelong uh, connections in our organizations that will last a lifetime. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. We want our community to be welcoming to everyone. Uh, in order to achieve that, we provide education that centers diversity, equity, and inclusion, and provide trainings that focus on equity and access in recruitment. Next slide, please. So what does our community look like uh, through this infographic? FSL students on average contribute 120,000 hours of community service per year, raise on average over $400,000 per year. 20% of the student population at Cal Poly are a part of fraternity and sorority life, and 30% of those students are on the Dean's list. And our Order of Omega Greek Honor Society boasts over 100 members and continues to grow. So let's take a look at just some of the programming we do. Next slide, please. Officer Institute. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of these. Officer Institute occurs at the start of the academic year and gives chapter leaders information and resources to start the year successfully. Uh, let's look here, Hazing Prevention Week. This week is where all of our organizations come together and focus on hazing prevention. Uh, Aware Awake Alive Week. You'll hear about this on campus and during slow days. But Aware Awake Alive is a foundation that was started after one of our own community members, Carson Starkey, passed away due to alcohol poisoning 11 years ago. This organization is focused around education and prevention around this area, so this tragedy never happens again. Um, along with annual programming, we also do a lot of education. Next slide, please. The office is committed uh, to educating our students and we do this by collaborating with departments on campus and building curriculum content. The office provides sexual assault prevention training, diversity, equity and inclusion workshops, hazing prevention training and online modules, social risk management training, bystander intervention training and mental distress training. Um, providing annual education programming uh, is imperative because we expect every single one of our students to uphold the mission, values, and pillars of FSL. Um, so now let's take a look at our councils. Next slide, please. Um, next slide. So we have um, three main councils that um, basically house all of our fraternities and sororities. We have the Interfraternity Council, our Panhellenic Council, and the United Sorority and Fraternity Council. And then Order of Omega is our fourth council. This is an academic honor society um, that I will be talking about a little bit later. So to talk about our councils, I would like to um, call up our students to talk a little bit about their experiences in each council. Hi everyone. Um, the IFC, also known as the Interfraternity Council, it consists of 15 chapters and there are 11 executive board members that oversee it all. Um, some of our signature events include Healthy Men and Masculinities Week, uh, New Member Institute uh, Recruitment, I'll touch on that in a second, and then Week of the Scholar. Uh, one of our philanthropies, philanthropies that we put on uh, each year is where we partner with Aware Week. Uh, as we touched on that earlier. And then um, there's still a few unknowns when it comes to recruitment. Uh, granted, the landscape of, of COVID has changed a few things. Uh, with that being said, it's we're aiming to do recruitment primarily uh, winter and spring as opposed to uh, a typical fall recruitment, which is what we do on any standard year. But it is, uh, you know, different times given uh, the situation of COVID. Uh, next slide, please. 
Hi everyone. So I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the Panhellenic Council. So Panhellenic is comprised of 10 different sororities and we have an executive board of 10 members that oversee them all. Some of the signature events we put on every year are Values Week, Scholarship Week, and of course recruitment. Um, our council's specific philanthropy is Circle of Sisterhood, which aims to raise money in order to make education available to all women around the world. And as for recruitment, we will still be having formal recruitment in the fall. Granted, it's going to look a lot different than it normally does. It will be mostly held virtually, if not all virtually. We'll have the specific details hammered out as we know more about the COVID situation and get a better idea of what Cal Poly is doing to respond as well. Um, our council also does optional recruitment in the winter and spring, meaning that chapters can opt to hold informal recruitments if they so choose, but it's no guarantee that every single chapter will be doing it. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and check out our website for important updates as we learn more about recruitment and you can just learn a little bit more about our council. Hi everyone, uh, again I'm representing the United Sorority and Fraternity Council, which is USFC. Um, which consists of 10 chapters and eight executive board members. Uh, what's a little different about USFC is that we're here to create a home away from home for uh, underrepresented, underrepresented students at a predominantly white institution. Um, so some of our interest topics are multicultural interest, Latinx interest, and Asian American and Asian interests. Um, some of our signature events are USFC Gala, Culture Fest, Polycultural Weekend, and Recruitment. Um, so formal recruitment will be in fall quarter again as COVID, you know, we figure thing, more things out about it. We'll let you know more about it, but for sure we'll have some informational sessions in fall um, at the very least, which will be around September 24th. And there's also some optional winter recruitment. Next slide, please. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, Order of Omega is our FSL Academic Honor Society. Um, right now we have over 100 members and um, in order to apply, you have to be either junior or senior status um, as a student and then also be in the top 3% of um, the Greek life community like grade wise. So um, it is an academic honor society. Through this organization, we provide academic support for our students. We do recognition, um, lots of programming. This last year, we did a lot of um, workshops with the Career Center to get our juniors and seniors in our community really prepared for entering the job force, which was really awesome. Um, they did resume building and cover letter help and interview help, and it was really great. They also help plan our standards of excellence banquet, which happens annually, and it's really a time for us to celebrate our entire fraternity and sorority life community and all of the great things that we've done over this last year. And then they also do have recruitment in the fall and winter quarter. Next slide, please. So um, there are a lot of ways to prepare for recruitment for all of our um, three councils. And the best way that I would recommend really is to follow CPFSL on Instagram for updates on recruitment and the community. Um, and then I would also recommend following all three councils on Instagram to stay up to date about their specific recruitment information. Um, all of these three councils recruit differently, and so it's very important to have information on the council that you wish that that you wish to join. And again, as um, all three of our students mentioned above, please keep in mind that fall quarter will definitely look different as we implement virtual components of recruitment. That's it from us. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much um, for such a such an informative presentation here. Um, and I want to thank all of our campus partners. Oops, oh, sorry about that, didn't have my camera on. So thanks so much for our, uh, all of our, camera, our campus partners um, and uh, all of this really phenomenal insight. Students, you have been asking some phenomenal questions uh, for us all. And I just wanna um, kind of talk about some questions that uh, a lot of you, you have been asking about regarding COVID uh, before we kind of shift gears and then um, t um, uh, go to our panelists. So a number of questions are coming about, out about what's Cal Poly's plan for this upcoming year. Um, and I just want you all to know that um, Cal Poly has done a tremendous job thus far for our current staff, 
faculty and students thus far at really providing that experience, that virtual experience. Um, as you may very well know, our motto is learn by doing. And so learn by doing has still been a hallmark of the Cal Poly experience during COVID. Um, some of our faculty are doing some tremendous things. We have um, even a live video of a plant in the College of Agriculture, Food and Environmental Sciences right now that is, uh, it blooms once every five years. It's actually, uh, it smells like rotting, like flesh, which is kind of disgusting, but it's it, <laughs> in my personal opinion. But our students in the College of Ag are working in our conservatory, conservatory on um, supporting our, our plant life. Our students in engineering are developing new products and ways to combat um, COVID. Our students across all colleges, from business to liberal arts to architecture, were engaging and learn by doing. And so when we shifted gears into spring quarter, we actually were planning on, of course, in-person um, classes when students went back and registered back in, uh, let's say that was February, uh, but we sh were able to shift 97% of our classes online. And when we really are planning for this fall quarter students, which will be starting September 14th, we have your interest in mind in terms of what we're planning uh, for residential life experiences, academic experiences, uh, advising, um, uh, diving deeper into your major with faculty, internships, office hours, our faculty, staff, and students are here for your success. And I want you all to know that we will make sure that we are communicating next steps with you all. Right now, we just, today, I don't have too much information about anything that's different than what we've provided thus far. But I wanna make sure that to the parent supporters as well as students on the call, we have your interest in mind um, if you are a local student, student from California, student from across uh, the East Coast or even international. We're here for your success and we're gonna make, be making sure that we're supporting you uh, when you get to Cal Poly. So um, let's get started with our first question. Our first question is going to go back to clubs and organizations. Um, and that's um, our second group that we heard from here today. Uh, the question that we got, um, one of the questions we got during uh, from a student was, what ways did clubs uh, meet uh, virtually uh, during COVID and, and still build community with respects to us not physically being on campus? So uh, to, to clubs and orgs, maybe what have clubs been doing to really support that community building uh, throughout the past uh, quarter and whatnot? I know that SWE has been doing some really awesome stuff. Do we, can we have our SWE representatives chime in first and I can share a couple of extra tidbits if I think of any. Yeah, so definitely. Um, so this past quarter, we had to really adapt to the virtual format, but we still wanted to connect, our, connect with our students as best as possible with our members. Um, so we had a lot of virtual meetings with companies. We had one with Chevron where they were able to still do their presentation and talk to students and network. Um, we had a panel with um, other diversity clubs. So it was SWE officers, Desby, Shep, and WISH, and they were able to talk about their opportunities that they've gotten through these clubs. Um, we invited incoming freshmen, so they got a better understanding of what each of these clubs did. And even for next quarter, we're still planning on having all of our programming and all of our events, but changing them to a virtual format. So we'll still have like our first general meeting and still have networking events with companies. It'll just be virtual. Yeah, and adding on to that, I think one cool thing too that quite a few of the clubs have done for a more social experience is, I know for example, my roommate is a part of the triathlon team and they did a lot of Netflix parties together during spring quarter. So fun things. My other roommate is a part of the food science club and I know they did like Bob Ross painting night. So I think people are getting super creative about fun social activities to do together on Zoom. And I think there's definitely opportunities to stay connected to both the social community building and still building community through professional events. And so I think Cal Poly students are getting very creative about all different sorts of things you can do over Zoom. Yeah, totally. And I've talked to a lot of different groups. And um, I mean, here are some of the things they, they'll use Instagram Live, they'll have like cooking competitions, one group, like they had a face off from one club member to another club member. And they're like, here are the ingredients go. And so they're making things. Um, there's a lot of groups that are using podcasts now. And they're just finding really creative ways to interact with uh, their community. Um, and it's not always going to be, it's not always synchronous. Sometimes it's happening at different times but it's still a way for you to interact with your community community in a way that works for you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for that insight on what Cal Poly students have been doing to build community as of late. Our next question is going to go over to our representatives from ASI, Associate Students Incorporated, and perhaps you can talk about um, from your experiences, how has ASI uh, student government and ASI events provide experiences for students to get involved while they're at Cal Poly? Yeah, so I think a lot of it first comes down to analyzing what students would like to see on campus. And so that's really important. When it comes to student government, a lot of that is how can we make our events um, both exciting and informational, educational for students. So we have an executive cabinet, specifically we have events like Buck the Stigma Mental Health Awareness Week to continue conversations surrounding mental health on campus. We have our Swap Don't Shop, which is a clothing drive to promote sustainable clothing practices where you can donate clothes and then pick up clothes for free. Um, we have our Food for Thought Campus Dining Open Forum where any students welcome to give feedback for campus dining so that we can help improve it on campus. We also have our It's on Us Sexual Assault Prevention Week to educate about that, um, which is a part of a nationwide movement. So there's a lot of different events within student government. We also have ways that students can get involved through working with board members on our board of directors to write resolutions for things they want to see change on campus. Um, so if you communicate with your representatives, which you can find on the ASI website, um, they're all very nice, very willing to work with you um, so that you can help make a change and address things in that way. Um, with ASI events, they usually are the ones who put on a lot of the big you know, concert, those types of events. And so um, some examples of things that they've done is this year they helped with bringing Spike Lee on the campus um, for a Q&A with him, which was amazing. And also, as Chip mentioned, we brought David Do Do Dobrik um, on the campus, which was a really exciting event, especially as that was during quarantine. And so um, it was a nice little relief. But so it's really about trying to find ways that you can get students more involved, get them educated through the event. Um, yeah, and the process is really, it depends on what each thing is. So there's many different avenues of how you can go about programming for events, but it comes down to um, providing students with what is best suited for them. Awesome, thank you so much um, uh, for that insight in terms of really Cal Poly is gonna be here for students to make sure that um, whatever it be from uh, sailing to getting involved in participating in concerts or attending concerts to advocacy, so many different opportunities, well, Cal Poly really has services for you all. So our third question is gonna go over to our fraternity and sorority life partners. And that is uh, what tips or tricks do you have uh, for a incoming student that might be on the call here today that wants to get plugged in when they arrive at Cal Poly uh, in terms of fraternity and sorority life? And what are ways for Cal Poly students to really uh, uh, take the, the most, uh, take advantage of their Cal Poly experience when they arrive and want to get in, involved in fraternity and sorority life? Um, I, can, uh, I can start here. Uh, I think the, the first thing you need to do is just get involved right away. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, when they first get to college and they're figuring stuff out a little bit on their own, uh, they fail or forget to go join a club or a fraternity or a sorority or anything like that. Um, so my biggest advice is get involved right away and just keep yourself busy and, and you'll make you know, lifelong friends. You'll just really enjoy your experience at Cal Poly. Um, and in general, uh, I think uh, joining a fraternity, joining a sorority is a great way to do that. Yeah, and I can talk a little bit about what my advice would be if you're looking to join a Panhellenic sorority. And I'd say as of right now, the best thing you could do is definitely stay updated with our Instagram and our website just so you can stay in the loop about recruitment details and what to expect in the fall. Um, you can sign up for recruitment through our Instagram bio or on our website. By the end of the day, we'll have a little tab to sign up on the website. Um, and then another piece of advice I have is if you're even considering joining a panel on sorority, I would definitely encourage you to just sign up for recruitment and give it a shot. Uh, you'll be able to talk to so many different women and so many different chapters and kind of hear about all the amazing work that all of them do. And just by kind of getting out of your comfort zone and going through that process, 
you're definitely going to get something out of it, some sort of growth. And so, um, yeah, I would just encourage you just jump right in, see if it's for you. Um, it's been a really great experience for me. So I just hope that you all enjoyed as well. Yeah, when I was interested in joining a USFC organization, I remember I went to this uh, event we have called USFC Kickoff, which we have a bunch of booths out and uh, I could meet all the organizations um, in USFC. And then that's how I found eventually my fraternity, Omega Xi Delta. But we'll have other informational sessions similar to USFC Kickoff and Meet the Greeks uh, this fall. So that's when you'll be able to um, have virtual meetings with all of our organizations. Also, you can follow us on CalPoly underscore USFC and then do some research on Instagram or online. Um, under CalPoly underscore USFC, they follow all of uh, the organizations within USFC. So you can check out our Instagrams and everything. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, that insight on how to get involved in fraternity and sorority life from you all three. Um, that's just, uh, it's such a great opportunity to jump right in and um, all three different pillars of fraternity and sorority life are um, excellent opportunities for you all to really uh, in, uh, heighten your academic experience. There's so many service opportunities, opportunities for that brother and sisterhood. And I want to uh, key into also those diversity and equity opportunities and inclusion opportunities that each one of those different chapters and groups are doing. So our next question is, and actually this will be our last question uh, for, um, for our panelists. We'll go over to clubs and organizations. And that is, how do clubs um, complement the academic experience at Cal Poly? Uh, does learn by doing happen maybe in clubs? Uh, what are the opportunities? Um, because some, there might be students on the call here today that would love to get involved in a club that actually complements um, their, their academic experience, uh, be it their college or be it their major or whatnot. So let's hear from clubs and orgs and uh, we'd love to uh, hear any insight or any tips and tricks you all have. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. I mean, um, there's a couple of different ways you can approach your education. One is passively and just say, hey, teach me. You know, I, I do the assignment, tell me to do the writing, I'll do the writing, tell me to take the test, I'll take the test. And there's definitely a place for that. But they've also done some pretty cool studies on students saying, no, I wanna learn about this. This is the direction that I'd like my education to go in. And um, it's just phenomenal what you can, the areas that you can grow in when you have your own sense of direction, when you can kind of fill out what it is that you wanna do, how do you wanna learn it? What, what areas do you wanna engage in? And I think that we have clubs, we also have something called instructional related activities, which uh, have learning outcomes. They look a lot like clubs, um, but they're not in that club's website. You just Google Cal Poly IRA, instructional related activities, to find a whole list of a whole nother group of uh, basically student organizations that are kind of centered around the academic focus. But I think SWE, again, not to keep defaulting and leaning on them, but that is a great example. And maybe even for our folks at SWE, you can provide like some tangible, like this is specifically what we do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually have a really great experience with SWE and I got the chance to work on two separate technical projects, um, my freshman and sophomore year through Team Tech, where we were sponsored by a company to um, do a project. And I really learned so many technical skills that I wouldn't have gotten the chance to learn in the classroom, as well as like professional skills. So that's something whenever I go for like interviews or talk to people, that's something they find really interesting is that I was able to work on like a very diverse engineering project. And I know a lot of other clubs do the same for other colleges. It's just a great chance to meet people in different majors and do work to something like a common goal. Yeah, and I think one more thing too is when you head into college, sometimes there's like the perception that you should only be doing clubs or orgs related to your major. And I just kind of wanted to debunk that because I came in as an environmental engineer and got pretty involved in Engineers Without Borders. And then what I'm doing now is very different from that. And I focus a lot more on um, advocacy with ASI for, sorry for a different day, but I would just encourage you all that your major doesn't necessarily define the type of technical projects you have to work on. And there are so many opportunities for you to get involved in clubs and orgs different from what you're studying that actually do a really great job of complementing and rounding out your education holistically. So I would just say like for sure there are some people who 
are going to study engineering and work on engineering and that's great for them and if you're not that person just don't be discouraged and keep jumping around and trying new things until you find something that fits yeah totally and i guess aaron just one other thing i'd add to that we got to meet with tess and sanj but i would say whatever club you're getting involved in find your tess or sanj somebody who is maybe a little bit older or has been doing college for a little while and like say like text them say hey i have this question about this class or i have this question about something um they are totally awesome resources i mean students at cal poly love to help other students because when you when you get to that point you're going to be in the same position you're going to want to give back too um and i mean tess or sanj if you want to debunk that but i don't think they will i think they love helping students succeed I actually wanted to reiterate on that um, through SWEET. I know a lot of engineering organizations or organizations on campus, we have like mentoring so you can get paired with someone in the same major who's older than you. They can help you with classes. Um, we also have like a test bank we offer where all older officers can like put their old tests in and quizzes and they can review them. Obviously, like it's not cheating or anything. It's tests they receive from professors. Um, and it's just like a great mentorship opportunity and you get a community of people in the same major as you who you can reach out to and look up to. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Um, Sanj, that is just great insight. And Chip, I love what you said and Tess, what you said about um, it doesn't necessarily have to be your, uh, the, the academic uh, uh, club related to your academic experience. In fact, actually our career services team actually recommends uh, getting a minor even outside of your own college um, to really complement that Cal Poly experience. And those are opportunities to take classes, get involved in clubs, and even uh, pick up minors outside your academic experience. So with that, students, we're gonna really close up. But one thing that I want you all to uh, keep in mind are that um, the transcript and test score deadline is just right around the corner, uh, July 15th. But I also recognize for the incoming uh, first year students that AP scores will not be released until the July 15th from College Board at the earliest. Um, so please just get those over to us as soon as possible. And then also, I encourage you all to make sure any high school or college trans transcripts are sent over to us. And last but not least, um, uh, check out that Cal Poly portal. That's where you're going to see really up to minute status of some really important to do list items. Uh, you're also going to begin to see some really vital information about orientation uh, that will include slow days, summer life and orientation days, as well as we could welcome housing, uh, financial aid, some really important information um, coming out to you all, um, including also every two weeks on, a on Tuesday. So we just sent one uh, this past Tuesday. We're sending a Cal Poly newsletter uh, with really kind of what you need to know about next steps. That's including slow days, um, some really cool opportunities to stay connected to Cal Poly, including these webinars. So that Cal Poly slash admissions slash accepted will also showcase the upcoming webinars after today. There's some great webinars. I know some students were asking about resources for out-of-state students. Um, there's going to be uh, sessions specific to you all. Uh, there will be specific sessions if you identify as Black, Indigenous, or a person of color. There's going to be some phenomenal experiences uh, for our incoming students. Also, check out our YouTube channel and the Cal Poly Admissions uh, Instagram. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining us here today. We wish you the best Friday afternoon. Um, and thank you so much to our campus partners and participants. Thank you all for attending here today. And with that, we look forward uh, to welcome you here as a Cal Poly Mustang this fall. Thank you all and um, have a great afternoon. Thanks so much.